Kevin Durant is one of the greatest scorers we have ever seen. A near seven footer with handles and a silky smooth jumper is a recipe for an unguardable basketball player. But coming into the NBA, there were concerns about his strength and skinny frame. So how did Kevin Durant overcome these concerns to become one of the greatest scorers ever and the prototype every tall skinny up and coming player strives to become? When Kevin Durant first came into the NBA, his game was built around jump shooting. So much so that in his rookie season, he took around 300 more shots outside of the paint than he did inside the paint. At the time, this was not the norm for a player who was almost 7 feet tall, as jump shooting was not as valued and the league was filled with bigs who dominated inside. But KD was defying the way tall players could play in the NBA. His tall frame, long arms, and smooth jump shot allowed for him to rise up over the defense and consistently knock down shots. And that's exactly what he did. But his game was built around the mid-range jumper, shooting over three times the amount of mid-range jump shots compared to threes in his rookie season. When he did shoot a three, it was almost always in a catch and shoot scenario, spotting up along the perimeter waiting for the ball to get swung to him or a kick out for an open jumper. In fact, in his first two seasons, over 90% of all the threes he took were assisted on, just to show how little he was creating for himself beyond the arc. However, in the mid-range, this was a different story. While he would occasionally spot up for these deep twos and run off pin downs to curl into these elbow jumpers, he was creating for himself off the dribble in the mid-range. For the most part, using fairly simple moves to dribble into a pull-up jumper and using his height to his advantage to get his shot off over the defense unbothered, while occasionally hanging in the air with a hezzy, then crossing over to flow into a jumper right over the defender. As he progressed throughout his career, he began to create for himself more and more off the dribble, having more threes that were unassisted on as he developed as a player, and he was more willing to shoot the three ball as well. He became more comfortable moving off ball to run into a jumper, stepping into a jumper with a hand in his face and making it with ease, and using fairly simple pull-up moves to flow right into a dribble pull-up three. His height and length has played a large factor in this because all he needs to do is create a little bit of space and he can get his shot off. Incorporating these hezzy pull-up jumpers over the contest of the defender, getting the defense leaning to the left with a hang dribble, then quickly crossing back to his right to shoot the dribble pull-up jumper, and easily coming off of screens, and if you play back for just a second, he can pull up and shoot right over you. He had a great blend of scoring off ball and with the ball in his hands. As we see, even in the prime of his career, he never rose above 50% of his threes being unassisted on. But he has always had a love for the mid-range, and his height has played a major factor in this. When we look at his mid-range shot attempts per game, there has only been a few seasons where he shot more threes than mid-range jumpers. Because of his height, length, and shooting ability, all he needs is a little bit of space and he can rise up over the defense to get his shot off. Even if the defender stays in front of him as he goes to create space, he can still just shoot right over them, even with a solid contest. Even when he would get cut off on drives, it didn't bother him as he could just stop and shoot the pull up over the defense. This has especially helped him in his later years, as we have seen a rise in his mid-range shot attempts per game as he has gotten older. He doesn't need to rely as much on speed or athleticism, and can instead just get to his spots on the court. Being able to play at a slower pace, getting to his post-up game and flowing into a post-fade jumper over the defender, and not needing to worry about being the quickest or fastest, but just being able to rise up and release the ball over the defense. His mid-range jump shooting numbers were the lowest during the middle of his career during the Warriors years and the last few years on the Thunder, and I think a lot of this had to do with his athleticism. Coming into the NBA, he wasn't the most explosive player. He didn't quite have that ability to just take off at any given moment and throw down a vicious dunk. Instead, he would often rely on his height and length to reach over the defense on drives to lay the ball up. He wasn't the best at absorbing contact on these drives either, at times getting easily knocked off balance as he tried to drive to the basket, and even trying to avoid contact altogether as he settles to shoot this pull-up jumper in the paint on the fast break. But he did show signs of combining his length and athleticism, like here where he takes one dribble in transition and can get to the rim in two steps after it. He would continue to build off of this as he developed throughout his career. One thing that became evident was that he developed a very quick first step. 
This allowed him to catch the ball, then rip right past the defender to get to the rim, or even quickly change pace with the ball in his hands to accelerate downhill to the basket. Using a fast crossover here to get right to the rim for a layup, with this fast first step, he became more explosive too, coming off the screen, accelerating to split the defense, and then rising up for a dunk driving down the lane. Using his quick first step to rip right by the defense, driving down the right side of the rim, jumping off his right foot, and throwing down a vicious dunk over the help side defense with his left hand. He developed his strength as well, which allowed him to absorb contact on the drives, yet still remain on balance and finish a layup at the rim. This became important for his finishing because it allowed him to drive into traffic, not get knocked off balance, and rise up using his length to finish over the defense. He became much more difficult to stop because he could get by the first defender and even if the help side defense did help over, he could rise up with his length to finish around you. This shows in the numbers too as he became more efficient scoring inside the restricted area after his first few years in the league. This made him a dynamic scoring threat in the prime of his career because he could not only beat you off the dribble with his jump shot, but he could also explode right by you and get down the lane to rise up to finish in traffic. However, in the past few seasons, while he is still athletic, you can tell he slightly lost a little bit of his explosion as he has aged. He will still show off these high flying dunks, but he doesn't quite have that same quick first step to just be able to rip by his defender at will. This has led to a lot more plays like this, where he can't beat his man off the dribble, and instead uses his height and length to shoot a floater over the defender. Or here, where he rips right past the defender, but the defender can recover back in time, so he settles for a mid-range dribble pull-up. He is much more selective when he chooses to drive through traffic to take it all the way to the rim, as his field goal percentage inside the restricted area is up there with the best it has ever been, but his attempts per game in the restricted area are at an all-time low. This shows that he's not trying to force his way to the rim, and instead is much more willing to stop to rise up for a jumper over the defense once they begin to cut him off on the drive. This would explain why his mid-range attempts were high at the beginning of his career, then took a dip in the middle, and are now back on the rise again later in his career. Because he doesn't quite have that quick explosion he did in his prime to be able to easily get to the rim. But this isn't hindering his game, because his mid-range field goal percentage has been at an all-time high in the past few seasons of his career. Now being able to beat the defense with his shooting ability, and using his length to easily get a shot off over them. This also explains why his shots in the paint are at an all-time high, and his field goal percentage on these shots is the highest it has ever been as well. Because he doesn't need to get right to the rim to score, and can still use his athleticism to get to the paint, and then use his touch to score, or slow down, get in the post, and turn to fade over the defense in the paint. His progression as a player is also a big thanks to his handle. Early on, most of his shot creation was from straight line drives and simple dribble pull-ups, and a lot of his scoring was from catch and shoot jumpers. But as he progressed and got more athletic, so did his handle, turning these simple dribble pull-up jumpers into multiple dribble combos to create space to rise up over the defense. His athleticism played a big part in this, allowing him to explode by his defender with a quick crossover, attack downhill, then absorb the contact when the help side defender helps over, and adjust his shot in the air to finish the layup. Even watch this play right here as he hits his defender with a hezzy crossover, then another crossover back to his right, then pulls it behind his back to his left hand, just a crossover again, this time blowing by the defender and getting to the rim for a layup. His ability to accelerate quickly out of these dribble combos made it so difficult to stay in front of him, because he could also get the defender leaning one way to snatch back the ball and pull up for a jumper. This is what made his signature hezzy pull up so lethal, because when he hangs in the air, it freezes the defender in place. If he plays back, KD can just pull up for a jumper right in his face, but if the defender presses up for the shot, KD can blow right by him and get downhill to the rim. He's used this same move to freeze the defender in transition to pull up for the jumper, and he's even used it with multiple crossovers hanging in the air waiting for the perfect moment for the defender to bite just to cross back over and shoot the jumper. These hezzies have helped him score later in his career as well, really selling the hang part in the hesitation to freeze the defender in place, then pull up to shoot the jumper over him. 
even helping him attack where he can hang leaning to his left and then quickly cross over to his right and be able to stop to pull up for the jumper as the defender is trying to run back to recover. The constant development of his game is what has made Kevin Durant one of the greatest scorers ever. Learning to utilize his height, length, athleticism, and shooting ability made him an unguardable dynamic scorer. Even in his later years, despite not being quite as explosive, he can still play to his strength and get buckets through his jump shot. Kevin Durant's decision to play for the Warriors in the prime of his career created arguably the greatest team ever. Combining his scoring ability with the shooting of Steph made for an unstoppable Warriors offense. Steph Curry evolving his game to play more off ball allowed this to happen. But his evolution as a player may have changed the entire way the game of basketball was played. So if you would like to see how Steph evolved as a player and how he changed the NBA with it, click on this video right here.